actually run it. Uh, now, as the weather gets warmer, you might be thinking about eating healthier and getting in better shape for summer. But if you're struggling with which health plan is best, Dr Nigat is here with All You Need To Know. Hello to you. I mean, how, how do you feel about diets in general anyway? Do they work? Is it good to be thinking about dieting? As a GP, I'm not a huge fan of diets per se because they're not maintainable. They're good for if you want to do something short term. Yeah. But also around summertime is when people are much sort of thinking about their body mm -hmm. and they want to get out and about and they are exercising. I'm seeing lots of people running around at the moment, which is giving me the motivation as well. And whether you love it or loathe it, ad campaigns like, are you bikini body ready? All of those stick in our mind and people do want to, at around spring, summertime, mm -hmm. think about how can I eat healthier? <laughs> It's quite a seasonal thing. It, it is a seasonal thing, and I think that's a good thing because in the winter, when you have shorter hours, you're sort of it's miserable and you don't yeah. want to exercise. Now we've got much more of this glorious sunshine where we should have some sunshine. And so you want to use that time as much as effectively possible. But if you look at weight loss per se, I say that it's a three holy grail. One is going to be nutrition. The next is movement, however you can get it. And third is your psychological, your mental health and your relationship with food and your mm -hmm. body. OK, so we'll start that by sort of really emphasising that and hammering that idea yeah. home. However, there are lots of diets out there, very popular diets. Um, Fasting, intermittent fasting, this is the 16-8 diet. So just explain what that yeah, is. That's becoming really popular. So you eat for eight hours a day and then you have 16 hours where you abstain from food. And this is really because it's trying to balance out your sugar control. And people are really liking this because it's becoming almost like a lifestyle choice. Right. And the other lifestyle choice when it comes to intermittent fasting is the 5-2 diet. I know that's really popular. We've had Dr. Michael Morsley on it because he sort of is really a huge yeah. fan of this. And I've tried it and it's worked quite well as well. And it's really because you're trying to form a, a habit for a longer time. So the 5-2 diet is where you um, are fasting for two days and then you are eating for five days. And again, it's trying to find that healthy balance. So you should still look at your nutrients. So it's your carb, your proteins, your sugar levels. So there's a palm theory of how much you should be eating, the hand theory. So technically, if you're looking at a plate, a plate of food, then you should have like a palm full of protein, a fistful of vegetables. So for men, it's two fistful, a thumb full of like fat and a pinky of your dessert that is how much your dessert you're allowed <laughs> how many with every meal with yeah if you wanted to or well, normally we say if you're going to have dessert then um a fingertip is a teaspoon so that's how much sugar if you wanted to really have some sugar but how many wow. people stick to that but that is the theory of the hand if you really wanted to sort of be God. sensible and, and you well. can and feel if you're on those Diets, oh, sorry. the fasting time, you can feel quite lethargic, can't yeah, you? Yeah, you can do, and it's because it's trying to sort of balance out your sugar levels and also fatigue and the motivation to stick to these diets mm. as well. All right, well, let's move on to another one. Keto diet and Atkins diet. Now, some people really do like the keto diet. Um, so the keto diet and the Atkins diet, essentially you're reducing your carbs and you're increasing your fat and protein. And it's really because you're pushing your body into ketosis. And yes, you see the weight loss quite quickly. And also, if you like meat and you like protein and fat, this is brilliant for you. There are side effects to it. So I would say, generally, the rule of thumb is, is that I've known patients who've got gallstones from um, the keto uh, diet and also patients who've had acute renal failure because remember, you're pushing your body into ketosis, so your kidneys are going to be effective. Again, the rule of thumb for me when it comes to diets is always consult a healthcare practitioner, mm. especially if you're pregnant, breastfeeding, if you have underlying health conditions and like type 1 or type 2 diabetes where your sugars have to be really carefully controlled and if you've had an eating disorder in the past. What's ketosis? So ketosis is when you're having high levels of um, ketones, so that's like a byproduct of um, the protein in your body because your, your kidneys aren't able to process the amount that you're giving it in one go. Okay. Um, what about... It's essentially toxins, sorry, that's what I should say. Okay. Um, juicing diets. Juicing diets. Where do I start with juicing diets? I know some people love juicing diets, and it's if you're really struggling, say, with bloating, because sometimes if you're having a quick on-the-go and you can't get your fruit and veg into you, then a juicing diet is really good. But let me tell everybody, nobody needs to detox anything out of their body. I'm not a huge fan of this whole detox yourself. And essentially, it's really trying to get the balance of fluids. And I know for some people originally, if they eat 
uh, are struggling to eat because their time and their, their schedules are so busy, then the juicing diet just gives you those nutrients such as vitamin D, calcium. Mm. But remember, if you're juicing something, so say like an orange, that's high concentration of sugar that's in there. So you get the sugar hit and it can give you the go, but then you're going to have that crash later on as your insulin releases from your body to bring those sugars down. I see. And so, and if you're juicing, say like an orange, then you've lost those lovely sort of fiber in mm -hmm. the orange and the nutrients, the other nutrients within the orange. So eating something whole, wholesome food. What about if you smoothie really it? Yeah, the smoothies also fall into that category. I know people like smoothies. Um, I've tried brand promotion, but I shouldn't. But I have. There is a a, a a shake diet that I've tried in the past, and it's great for a short term, like a wedding, or you've got a certain event that you want to go to, and you need to fit into that dress. Mm -hmm. I can completely understand that, but they're not something that you can maintain long run long at term. all. And yeah, it's as long as you're eating wholesome, good, organic food and you're getting your nutrients in, that's really, really important. So in our last sort of 30 seconds, the NHS tips on managing your weight. Yeah. Um, and that is, is eat regular meals, eat plenty of fruit and veg, get more active, eat high fibre foods and cut down on alcohol. Yeah, and there's a great app called Better Health as well, um, Couch to Kilo 5K as well. And there's so much on the NHS website on how you can lose weight. To help weight. you do it. Yeah. You're not on your own. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Lovely to see you.